you know, especially with superhero movies. All the lights start blinking because something's happening in the scene. You know, typically that's all DMX. Why do filmmakers use DMX in the first place? You just have the maximum control to, to be efficient. Hey, what's going on, DMogo? My name is Ted, and today I'm here with Ben Dynas, who is not only the lighting console programmer for films such as things like The Jungle Book, things like Suicide Squad, things like Thor 2, but he's also the CTO of Quasar Science. And as you guys know, I'm a part of Aperture, so today, Ben is gonna be talking to us about DMX programming. We're gonna walk through step-by-step step how to set up kind of a basic DMX flow if you're interested in using it. And finally, we're also gonna talk about what is an entry-level system that you guys can start with if you guys wanna start learning in this system as well. So obviously there is a little bit of a cost to enter for DMX. So uh, let's talk real quick about what are those main three reasons. So number one, you said speed. Yeah, speed, definitely. You know, when you pre-rig your lights around, you do your blocking, you see what needs to change, what needs to dim up, what needs to dim down, you just have the maximum control to to be efficient. You know, on, on big movies and big TV shows, um, you got to be quick because there's millions of dollars maybe, uh, you know, every second you're burning. So um, when your talent's on set and, hey, they, they need you to to dim that light down, you, you, sometimes you don't have the time to drop a double, drop a single, change the color, especially now with LEDs. The speed and convenience of it all um, really is is about control. So if you're shooting like the same location for like a day, a night, and then like, I don't know, like a trippy dream sequence, you could program in, pre-hang all of your lights, and then with DMX, you can just go through and change through the scenes without having to relight anything. There's, there's that old sitcom gaff that you see sometimes, and it's the couple in bed and somebody's gonna reach over and turn the lights on and you see the, the tungsten lights turn off and you see the blue moonlights turn on. You know, that's that's kind of that, that old school lighting change that you used to see all the time, but that's two different lights rigged in the same environment to create two different fields of lighting. You know, especially with superhero movies or all the lights start blinking because something's happening in the scene. You know, typically that's all DMX and that's all about control and somebody is the wizard behind the curtain thumping away to, to make all that happen. Now let's say you've bought all the stuff. What do you actually need to know? How did this actually work in the first place? Sure, so uh, DMX is digital multiplexing. That's what it's called. It is a packet of data of 512 channels that are telling all the lights what to do. So essentially every light that you want to individually control will have a DMX start address. So like the light behind me, that's set at channel one. So if I affect channel one, then that's gonna change. If we think about it like letters in the mail or something like that, there's a constant flow of letters that are shooting out that's little right. packets of data. And those packets of data are going to everything that's plugged into the DMX workflow. What each envelope has in it is it has 512 little things where it says one is at 100, two is at zero. It's always gonna send all 512 little options in each one. It's constantly, every 23 milliseconds, sending a new packet of data. What the DMX is sending is they're not just sending uh, zero to 100% because it doesn't think in percents, it actually thinks in DMX bytes. So that's zero to 255 values. Mm -hmm. Even beyond that, you can go to what's called a 16-bit DMX channel and that has uh, 65,000 steps. So when you're just talking about intensity, then that's one channel per light. Mm -hmm. And then if you have a bicolor light where you have intensity and color temp, now that's occupying two channels. So you start that start address at channel one, but the next light you would start at channel three because you wanna leave space in your channels to control the other parameters of a light. Then beyond a bicolor light, then you have an RGB color light. Well, now there's three channels for that. You've got your red, your green, and your blue. How are you controlling the light with those three channels? And as you can imagine, it starts to scale up and scale up and scale up. Now beyond that though, there's something called a DMX universe. So what is that? So a DMX universe is a collection of the 512 channels. So let's just say you had a thousand lights to control. If you wanted to control them all individually, you would need two universes, which is ends up being like you have two separate mailmen. You'd have two mailmen both throwing letters, but at specific targets. So you could have one light behind you on universe one, you could have another one on universe two and universe three. And that's all about what network of cables those those lights are plugged into. Say you had all of uh, your aperture lights, you could put those on universe one and all your quasar lights, you could put those on universe two. There's no reason to not break them up when you have a lighting console. It could just help you organize yourself better, especially when you have bigger crews and you're gonna say, hey, put all those on universe one, put all those on universe two. When you get into multiple universes, then you're getting more into the realm of computer-based lighting consoles. What are the traditional methods in which we can get control? So uh, number one is like a standard dimmer. Right, so this we call this a hand squeezer. This is just a, a, a household dimmer. 
that, uh, you know, it's electronic dimmer to, to change the intensity of a light. We're talking about just affecting the intensity only. You know, this is this is the dimmer that is inside of the big dimmer packs, you know, the 48 channel racks and things like that. They have very similar dimmers to this inside. For a lot of you super duper indie guys out there, there's like the Home Depot, like little <laughs> dimmers as well too. So moving on from dimmers, we have flicker boxes. If we needed to make this light flicker in the scene, you could have somebody up there with a the thing all going like this and that's, awkward and not accurate and, and just yeah. all over cumbersome. Yeah, they make little flicker boxes that you can set the minimum, the maximum, and do you want it to be a candle? Do you want it to be a flame? Like what's what's the effect that you're looking for from that? From there, we can go on to slider boards. When you have a set, uh, uh, like a living room set and you have desk lamp and table lamp and this and that, well, you could have a whole bunch of hand squeezers everywhere. Yeah. Um, and you could say, hey, dim that up, dim that down, talk to your, your lamp ops and technicians. Um, or you can centralize your dimming with a dimmer pack and put all those on DMX. Beyond just the slider, if we want to automate even one step further, there is computer software and stuff like that as well too. Yeah, from there, um, you know, when you're affecting channels here, you're doing that all manually. But what if you want a light to dim up to mimic the sunrise and you want it to dim up over the course of a minute to be this backlight that gets brighter and brighter and brighter? Well, if you're gonna do that with your hand and your finger, that's very tedious and also not very uh, efficient. For all of you Premiere editors out there, you Final Cut editors out there, uh, this is a world that you are kind of familiar with in the sense that you are literally programming, I wanna go from this keyframe to this free frame for my intensity, and this frame to this frame for my saturation or my hue, okay. So when you get into computer-based control, now you're getting into queuing, you're getting into, um, you know, somebody walks in a room and hits a bunch of different light switches one at a time, um, well, instead of hitting up a bunch of boxes it yourself, you know, you can just set that on a queue to nicely and easily hit go. <laughs> yeah, and then finally, I think we're getting to DMX app control. There's a bunch of different apps out there that take the slider based control and they put it into an app for iOS and Android um, that can really affordably get you to control your lights over DMX, do efficient dimming and uh, do real time queuing. We're gonna break into a couple of those right away. Everything we need to get started, plus some DMX compatible lights here in the back. We have two types of DMX compatible lights. We got one that's basically our plug-in DMX cable, and then the other ones actually have wireless receivers built into them already. So we're gonna be talking about how to set those up in Luminaire. So how do we get started from here? So first you start with the, uh, you got your app, you got Luminaire preloaded on here, and this is going to connect to your router. So we got our router plugged in here. Uh, next, we're gonna have a Cat5 cable. We're gonna plug this from the router into the Entech ODE. And literally, when we say connect the iPad to the router, all you have to do is just log into the network of the router. That's right. Yeah, so here we've got, again, Ethernet from the router to the Entech ODE. The Entech ODE is going straight to our transmitter, which is being powered and plugged in as well. And then now we've got this wireless receiver. We grabbed our power cables. We gave this power supply that it needs. All I gotta do is now grab a controller box or a light that has DMX compatibility. So I've got a 300D Mark II here on the bottom. All I gotta do is just plug in one of those antennas here at the bottom and voila. So let's try dimming this up and dimming this All down. Right. So we're dimming it up and dimming it down. And just like that, we now have wireless control from the iPad directly to a 300D Mark II from wireless DMX. That's so. right. So if you have wireless built in, like on the Rainbow and R2 and RR, you can pair your transmitter directly to the light. Mm. But if your device does not have a wireless DMX built in, then you could place a, a Centena receiver on that device and then pair the two devices together. So this is the reason why it's such a big deal to have wireless DMX built into your lights a lot of the time because you are saving that $650 thing. So now from here, you can either get additional centennas to put them on additional lights, or you can even just run a wire a, a DMX cable right out of that device into another one. I'm gonna grab one of these DMX cables, and all I gotta do is go DMX out of this control box and DMX into another control box. So let's try plugging that in. All right. And then we can dim it down super smoothly too. Now, before we move on, I wanna to talk to you real quick about Squarespace, which is absolutely the place that basically any filmmaker needs to go to to set up their website. Now, it's the holiday season. There's a good chance that you might've gotten some new gear at this point. 
Now, if that's the case, one of the best ways that you can justify a lot of that new gear is to actually update your kit page or update your personal website with it. Now, for us, we have a separate website that we actually put down everything that we're shooting with already. So here is how we link it back to Squarespace. Go to the website icon, hit pages, click the plus icon next to the main navigation, go down to this link over here, fill out this pop-up window with the other website, and there you have it. That is literally it. Now all your clients need to do is just go to this website and they will see all the things that you've invested in, all the gear that you have, and they can already start putting your best foot forward. So if you want to start giving this a try, head over to squarespace.com slash to start a 14 day free trial and getting 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. In fact, you can find the link for that in the description down below. Other than that, thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. And now back to the video. When we're working with something like a larger system like this, like a full lighting console, um, how does this differ? Where does this plug into the same system that we had before? So this will replace your iPad and your NTEC ODE. This becomes your DMX controller for that, for your network and for that universe. Um, it also has four universes out of this itself, which is a Roadhog 4 by high-end systems. It has four universes out directly, um, as opposed to the ODE is only one universe. And then we've taken our wireless transmitter and we plugged it right back, right into the back of the console. So um, then we can wirelessly control our devices. So then in the console, then you can do all your complicated timings. You could control lights that are located all over your set and then uh, just run your cues and, and go from there. Like we can just go to town here. Whoa! <laughs> and now we can rave. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked a lot about the intro to DMX here. So if you want to get deeper into this though, uh, what else is out there already? Well, um, there's RDM, which is the two-way communication from the lighting console device to the lights. So the mailman throws letters while the other person is also a mailman yeah, throwing yeah. letters back. He okay. reaches up and catches it and say, I got your letter. You can also ask the light what temperature it's at. And you know, you can, if it's freaking out, you could tell it to restart. Really RDM is, is a lot of times used when setting up a network, a large network, because you can do something called RDM discovery where you set up all the lights and then you say, okay, here's my first light and some light will blink. And you go, oh, okay, UB start address one. And there's also something um, called SACN and ArtNet. Those are two IP based ethernet protocols to distribute the DMX data. So with that, it's all about how you're distributing your data throughout your network. When you have extremely large networks of lights that take up a lot of DMX channels, instead of physically running a single cable from your lighting console to all of your lights, um, you can run that over uh, Ethernet. And that will greatly help how your network is distributing your data and how your lights are receiving that data. So over a single cable, you can have multiple universes instead of having one cable per universe. I guess the better analogy is you're throwing mailmen out. <laughs> <laughs> you're throwing mailmen at people? <laughs> that's right. So it's, it's really about um, optimizing your network. I mean, that, that's when we were getting into um, the high level stuff where you do on all the big Marvel movies and Star Wars and all that, where you're gonna have data everywhere. And that's when you get into a lot of video mapping and things like that, where you're making LED walls and pixel walls and yeah. very intro to DMX type of stuff. It does go deeper. <laughs> It goes much deeper. This is part one of a 512 <laughs> part series. Oh no! Uh, this is by no means entirely comprehensive for everything that you need to know for DMX, but you do know a little bit about the basic key terminology. You also know about a couple of the fixtures, and likewise, you also know about kind of the entry level gear that you need to get started. Now, likewise, I want to mention too, uh, Quasar lights, uh, of course, are basically almost entirely DMX controlled as well, too. That's right. Yeah, we have our, our new rainbows and double rainbows coming out. And those you can control over DMX. You can control them over Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, wireless DMX, all built in. Yeah. You can also control them over SACN and ArtNet. Yeah. Um, so there's lots of ways to control them and lots of different options. Again, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Put yourself out there by going to squarespace.com slash IndieMogul for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Make sure you leave your questions down below if you have any questions or topics or things that you want to talk about regarding DMX and wireless DMX. Other than that, I'm Ted, this is Ben, and of course, we will catch you guys next time. How's this flicker gag, boss? Ah! It's perfect. What's this movie called again? Star Wars?